God to the government. The Maya civilization was ruled by a king who was also considered a god, or at the very least, uh, the intermediary between the gods and the people. This was made this sorry this made their form of government a theocracy. Uh, they did have city states, so each of these cities that we saw in the previous maps were actually had their own independent countries, country types, or city states, as we've talked about before. Um, though they worked together for trade and other purposes. So they had similar civilizations, similar cultures, similar religions, um, similar ways of doing things, but they were their own government. Each city had its own king, rulership, priests, uh, etc. Dynasties were very important, uh, which ensured the transfer of power from one ruler to the next within the same family. Which kind of makes sense. If the ruler was considered a god, or almost a god, Therefore, the family would also be considered godlike for descendants of the gods themselves. So they wanted to make sure that the leadership would continue to ha should be they should be the leaders because they're the gods, passed down from one generation to the next. Finally, uh, for government, the noble classes were near the top when it comes to their social class system. If you look at the top of this picture here, you'll notice that there's one person. That would be the king, obviously. Right under him would be the priests, the second highest group of people in this uh, class system. Underneath that, uh, the next two sections down would be actually the nobles and the commoners. And the final uh, lower level would be the slaves or the conquered people who had uh, lost in battle. All right, when we talk about religion, you need to know that these group of people were polytheistic. As we know, polytheistic simply means they had more than one god. Well, because they had more than one god, it was the job of the, god, of the priests and the king to make sure that the gods were happy. And to do this, they would offer blood offerings. There is recorded evidence to suggest that at times they would sacrifice hundreds of people, one after the other, in order to satisfy the gods' need for food and drink. We'll look more about this into our DBQ uh, in our next unit, which talks about human sacrificing, specifically with the Aztecs, but it's very similar to how the Mayans did it as well. Besides sacrificing humans on altars and cutting out their hearts and things, the Mayans would also perform sacrifices at naturally occurring sinkholes that are found throughout the area. This one here is known as the Hultan Sinot. Uh, people and other objects would be thrown into this huge pit of rock and, uh, and water and sacrificed to the rain god Sh uh, Shahak. Uh, other sea notes were also used as a way to get water to the cities since there were no rivers above ground or lakes on or around the Yucatan Peninsula. What's kind of unique about this particular uh, sea note, this one's called the Hutan, as I mentioned, that this, because of where the eye hole is, right in the center of the top, sunlight, direct sunlight, only gets in twice a year during the vernal equinox and the autumnal equinox. That's not to say that it's dark all the other days of the year. It just doesn't get direct sunlight. So if you're in the bottom of this thing and you look up, you'll only see the sun on those two specific days of the year. Here, we see a depiction of a human sacrifice. The person would be led to the top of the pyramid where there is an altar. The person would be bound and killed. The image above as we see here, shows a priest removing the heart from the victim and then kicking the body down the steps. Typically, this would be done uh, by the Mayans by the nobles. They considered, uh, th their gods kind of thought that the nobles would be more of a sacrifice than if it were a peasant or, or a slave. So the higher authority, the more the more the gods will listen to you because it's a higher authority, a higher level of the social class, which is different than the Aztecs, which we'll learn about later on. 
uh, there is evidence to suggest that the Mayans also used child sacrifices as young as anywhere from two years old to four years old. This was considered uh, normal, as, as far as we can tell right now, that they would use for the blessing of new temples or other type of significant buildings in the city. They're still not sure exactly the purpose or if that's true, but that's what they're coming to learn the more they get into this. Stay tuned for more information on that. The Mayans have had many achievements during their existence. One of the biggest achievements that they've been able to do is they've learned how to keep track of time. So accurate were they, they were two thousandths of a percent off from the same time we use today. And they did this about 1500 years ago. So these guys were extremely accurate with their calendar system. Back in 2012, if you remember, there was this whole scare about the end of the world. 2012, that the minds predicted that the world was going to come to an end. Their calendar indicated that nothing would continue on. Most educated people, though, realized that this simply did not mean that the world was going to end. This just meant that their calendar was their, their calendar was done. Our calendars are over in 12 months. Their calendars were over in about a thousand years. Well, since by the time the next calendar was up for being rewritten, the minds were already dead. Their civilization was gone. So nobody was really there to create the new calendar. Um, so those people, those naysayers, those skeptics that were predicting the end of the world in 2012, sorry to say, I'm still here. Another achievement that we can talk about is a temple known as Temple 4. Uh, this is one of many temples that existed, but what makes this temple unique is the fact that it was 212 feet high. That is huge, considering the fact that they'd made this thing without any type of steel iron or any types of wheels okay they had to do this all with manual labor walking dragging putting it on their back all these rocks it was crazy so the fact they were able to build this huge pyramid this huge uh, temple was amazing with what they had to work with And, of course, you can't talk about a civilization without talking about their recreation and their entertainment. Like everyone else, the Mayans also had their sports. The most popular sport they had, we know today as simply the Maya ball game. This game was not uh, used just for entertainment and for the uh, fun of the spectators, but it was also used for religious purposes as well as uh, settling any problems that other communities had uh, with each other. Um, think of it this way. This ball game was a combination of soccer and basketball. I would encourage you to check the link. Uh, there's a cool video on the SLC site that kind of shows an example of how the game was played. But simply it had a three to five pound rubber ball, solid rubber ball, probably about the weight of your textbook and about the size of a bowling ball. And they would have to use their body to get this ball into these horizontal hoops that were on each side of a particular field. Couldn't use their hands, they just had to use their bodies so on, as you can kind of guess, it was sort of like soccer, but they had to get the ball in the hoop like basketball. The game was obviously used for entertainment. However, these competitions also served other functions. Sometimes these competitions would, be rep would represent the battles that existed between the sky and the lord of the underworld, this constant battle that the two are always having. This obviously shows a religious purpose to the games and the balance between these gods. Uh, other types of of symbol, uh, other types of things or symbolized symbolizations could also be used uh, for the games as well. Sometimes, which I thought would be, I think is kind of interesting too, is you'd have two competing communities that would play one another in order to dispute uh, or settle to some sort of disputes. It's believed that the captain of the losing team would actually be executed uh, if his team had failed. 
So it kind of makes you wonder, you're either really good and know you're going to win, or you might want to question whether or not you really want to be the leader of your, your team. Yeah. So in summary, we talked today about how the Mayan civilizations existed on the southern area of the present-day Mexico and on the Yucatan Peninsula, that they created an advanced writing system language, that had, they had a trade network for the economic success, their government was a theocracy, and a king who would talk to the gods and they would practice human sacrificing as part of that religion for the purpose of keeping the gods happy. Additionally, we looked at some of the amazing achievements of the Mayas, as well as their sporting ball games and its social and religious significance. Though the Mayan civilization no longer exists in Mexico, it must be said that they were a very large and successful civilization that lasted about 1,500 years. It is their achievements that need to be considered when looking at them. They created an extremely accurate calendar by looking at the stars, invented a totally unique language, excelled at agriculture, art, and mathematics, and somewhere along the line were able to create their own religion and customs. Many of these things they did even before the Europeans had done so themselves. It is not certain how the civilization failed, other than we know that the cities became abandoned and eventually their culture collapsed because of it. I do hope that you enjoyed and got some information that was useful out of this lecture. And as usual, feel free to get a hold of me if you have any questions that need answer. Um, I would encourage you to rewatch this video if you have some other questions or need to review the information that you might have missed. Or feel free again to look at the other resources that are available under the resources and uh, checkup information on the SLC site. And with that, uh, here's my reference page. I hope you found my information useful. And as always, continue to be awesome. Have a great day.